besides sending the police, you might want to send an ambulance or a hearse. Hello, Billy Ho here, coming at you, 2023 Valero Texas Open, uh, TPC San Antonio, the Oaks course. Five things before we get started. Number one is hit that subscribe button. I thought I'd wear my Shine Warner shirt in a minute. Uh, that'll tell you how to do it real easy. You can see it in the background. Subscribe, smash the like. Maybe I'll get a smash the like t-shirt made one day. That'd be nice. Uh, preview article is published and I will post it. It's a work in progress. We haven't even gotten pricing contests or anything so that, that article starts coming together a lot better Monday, Tuesday of next week. I do got some players and some course descriptions. We'll take a quick peek at it. Anyway, uh, DraftKings contest will be out Monday. And uh, the Discord channel, the links are always there. Uh, so don't be shy. Come on in and uh, the water's warm. So uh, let's get started on some Valero Texas Open. Right now, a match play is going on real quick. And... Uh, it looks like a, a lot. I, my guys fell apart yesterday. I lost uh, two playoffs and a uh, couple other things didn't swing my way, but I still might be able to salvage some. If uh, a few things break my way, I might be able to salvage some cash. I'm actually doing a little better in the Corrales Punta Canta, which was the uh, one I originally did all my research on and was ready to do a preview show before I realized, doy, it's, you know, match play time. So uh, I went ahead and did a show on that. Appreciate you guys watching. I got a lot of good feedback on that. Uh, a lot of views, well over 400 views on that Punta Cana. And I did put two lineups in, and they both hit six of six. I thought I was doing great. And then I looked and I said, well, shit, everybody's hitting six of sixes. That might be the highest six of six turnout week. I don't know. I, I tried to hit up Cut Sweats to find out, but – they didn't really have anything on it. They had the DP World Tour, so I don't know, but I think it was almost 25% in the contest that I was in uh, that got six of sixes. So, you know, even six of six is uh, not going to guarantee a cash this week, but maybe I'll get some guys up there. Uh, so anyway, that's enough of the uh, updates for the week. Uh, a few more little housekeeping items. Uh, the Masters, I'm already doing cracking out research. Rick Run Good's got a cheat sheet up for Masters. I'm going to get an early start on that. So we're going to be getting all the worms next week. So I'm going to have like a little mini preview show out. Uh, so we'll, we'll look at some players, the golf course, and, and some things, you know, course history and all that great stuff. Uh, the second thing is Kentucky Derby. Coming up, I'm a hometown boy, Louisville, Kentucky, born and raised. I've been to Churchill Downs a thousand times. I kind of know how things work around there. Uh, so uh, five mi five or six miles away from the track. So all your weather and updates and, and track conditions and all that stuff, biases. I'm going to put a video out that was like by far the highest rated uh, and watched video I had of uh, the whole time I've been doing this. Last year, it was like 3,500 views, so I'm going to do another derby show, and I might even do more than one. I just did that one as a, uh, you know, because I am local, and the derby is our biggest, probably the biggest event in Louisville every year. We do a big festival, so be on the lookout for that. That's going to be coming up in just a few more weeks. So without further ado, let's get it started. All right, Valero Texas Open, uh, TPC San Antonio, 7,435 yards, par 72. Fairways and rough are rye and a fescue mix. Uh, the, the rough is a little bit penal. Uh, Poa Greens, Poa Trivialis Greens, about 6,400 feet, as you can see on average, but they are oddly shaped and they're sloping and undulating. So as you can see right there, uh, the, the slopes, you can literally see it sloping, you know, like like waves in the ocean almost. They only run about 11, 11 and a half on the stemp uh, due to the uh, windy conditions, I think. And they're very, and, and of course, the sloping 
uh, undulating greens also. So they don't want the wind blowing the ball around. So these greens, I guess, will be on the slow side. And you can see there's a, a, a ton of bunkers everywhere and everything. So we're uh, And also you can see how the course features narrow fairways, strategically placed uh, fairway bunkers, and uh, the, those small and undulating greens. So the uh, if the wind kicks up, this course can play very difficult. Uh, the par five second hole measures 605 yards from the back tees. So that's probably a three shot par five. Uh, the par fives are crucial this week. We'll get into the stats here in just a second. Uh, but the par three sixteenth measures 193 yards, and I, I think that's that's uh, coming up. But it, you'll see it because it has a big fat bunker right in dead in the middle of the green. So overall, this course is pretty demanding, and it requires precision, accuracy, patience. Uh, so it's a good tester for from all aspects. Complete tee to green game. And uh, those bunkers do look kind of deep as well, so uh, I, I'm uh, I'm looking forward to this tournament. It's it's going to be a lot of the pros, a lot of the top fifty will be taking this week off, uh, it geared up for the Masters. But there'll be a lot of people trying to take advantage and getting those all valuable FedEx points and all that good stuff. So uh, let's get into some stats. All right, and this is the article. If you've if you've seen it once, you you know the format. Uh, I haven't really gotten too far into it, but I just read off some of the stuff. Uh, the weather section, early weather indicates wind, wind's probably going to play a little bit of a factor. There might be thunderstorms somewhere in the neighborhood of Thursday, uh, but that's you know a week you know almost a week away, so we can't really uh, predict that far out. So the model stats, obviously, strokes gained off the tee are crucial. Uh, emphasis on accuracy and distance, really, total driving. I mean, if you can be long and accurate, uh, that you're my guy because of some of these long par fours and par fives. Uh, the par five birdie are better, obviously, greens gained. Uh, three putt avoidance, putting in general, putts per green and regulation, that kind of stuff. Complete tee to green game. Around the green is going to be crucial. Uh, this is kind of just like a, a course fit thing right here that I that I pulled up from uh, Data Golf, and you can see the around the green part of it is uh, is spiking in on this little uh, model. So uh, the short game is going to be huge, uh, and especially with the undulating greens, you want to be below the hole, obviously, and putting can be challenging, and so. You need to have a feel for the speed and the break of these greens or you're going to be in trouble. So course history is important to me here. Uh, and there's a few guys with some pretty good course history as we'll get into that here momentarily. Um, so anyway, that's about all I got for that. Players, we don't really have a, a list of players to look at. Uh, this is the cheat sheet, though. This is kind of neat. I'll leave it up here. And you can just see that this is the for the Masters, if you just want to take a look at some Masters guys and whatnot. But I'm just going to bring up a couple of guys before we get out of here. It's a brief preview. People might not even play a lot this week. Uh, so they they're, people are going to be gearing up for the Masters, as am I. So uh, that said, the, the main guys, Ricky Fowler, everybody's slurgling the Ricky. Uh, he's all over commercials, even though he's played a little better. Now he's all of a sudden, you know, great or something. But, you know, this is the last chance for Ricky to even get into the Masters field. He has to win because he failed to get out of his group in match play. Uh, he would have had to have made the Elite Eight, I think, to get. So he's like 58th or 59th or something coming into this tournament. And I think the only exemption for uh, Valero is the if the winner has not already qualified, the winner gets in. So Ricky has to win. Uh, the second guy I wanted to mention was Hideki Matsuyama, who uh, obviously, we if you follow golf, he's been complaining of this neck injury and back injury for a year. Uh, and it looks like it's a permanent thing. He might have to have Peyton Manning, you know, neck fusion surgery or something uh, because it's becoming a problem, which a lot of it probably had to do, uh, you know, getting off to an 0-2 start in match play is uh, not good for your neck pain anyway. <laughs> so, 
Basically, he withdraws and concedes the match to Homa on Friday to get on out of there. And I think he needs a week off. I mean, he's going to, he's already in the, he's a past Masters champion. So he's never not going to be able to play in the Masters again. Uh, so why do you want to come out and risk further uh, jacking your neck up? So I'm going to say that he's unlikely to play. Uh, he hasn't officially withdrawn yet, but uh, smart money. Uh, if he was smart, he would probably withdraw. Uh, another guy, and this is good to have him back playing well again, Benny on. And I know we make fun of him, no putt Benny and all that stuff. But his around the green game is stellar, and he's actually putted the ball much better. He's made almost every single cut in the calendar year this year. The only one he missed was a withdrawal with this wrist injury from Arnold Palmer. And he was only one shot off the cut line. So you got to figure there was a significant enough injury where he did not want to risk uh, taking a chance on further uh, making things worse. So, uh, and some other veterans in this tournament, uh, Cam Davis, I thought I'd mention because he is a long and accurate. He can be accurate anyway. Cam Davis is uh, in this tournament and he's looked a lot better. We find we finally found out the why why he was playing so poorly uh, the last week or so, and uh, so basically what it amounted to was Cam Davis had this illness. I, I don't know what it was, but it it lingered for a couple of months, and he's finally passed it, and he's starting to play some much better golf. Uh, so and he was all right. He was pretty decent at match play, uh, but. I think what we're working with uh, at Valero is he can use his length off the tee and uh, and his iron game and putting on. He's more of a, I like him on bent surfaces uh, mostly, but on slow poa greens, he, he might be okay there. So I'm I'm gonna give him a look. Siwoo Kim is another one. Uh, I don't I don't know about course fit and whatnot, but Chris Kirk seems like a really good course fit. Keith Mitchell. Uh, good course fit. I think Terrell Hatton's going to be in it too. Uh, some of the others, uh, newbies, some new dudes. Uh, I call them newbies, but they're they're just guys that are just now in their maybe their first year of the PGA Tour or limited starts. But like Hayden Buckley, Davis Riley, Ben Griffin, and Taylor Montgomery, all four of those guys seem like they'd be pretty good fits. Uh, good all around players and, and guys that that are got bright futures. Uh, so, and some others, I'll just toss out a few more names, Thomas Detry, Will Gordon, Pat and Gazire, uh, Pat and Gazire makes runs in Texas and he's been playing pretty good rounding into form anyway. So I'm going to take a real good look at Pat and Gazire. Ben Martin is another one of the Ben's that's had a couple of strung together, a couple of good weeks. You know, he is, I guess I could have put him in the newbie category, Matt Kuchar, maybe, uh, I don't know how he'll come out and how many rounds if he, if he happens to go through and play all week and all the way through till Sunday, he may uh, be a little wonky, but Taylor Pendrith, Andrew Putnam, Adam Shank. Uh, those are just, uh, uh, I went down the, the field and just kind of was picking out guys that I thought might be interesting and guys that might give you a jump off on uh, maybe your uh, research for the week. So uh, that's going to do it for the preview show. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, tell a friend, tell five friends. Uh, I'd love to get, I'm about 20 subs away from 300. I would really, I, I don't think I'll get there, but I would really love to get uh, a few more subs close to the Masters and then bust over 300 Masters week and just plow 300 and maybe I'll do some giveaways. I make t-shirts. I'll make you a Billy Ho t-shirt or I'll make you a favorite t-shirt of your favorite college team or uh, maybe a professional team or something and send you that for free. Uh, I'll pick a few guys at random and whatnot. Uh, we'll have contests. Maybe I'll, I got beer koozies. I got all kinds of stuff. So, uh, so we'll uh, be looking forward to that. And uh, till the next video, see you soon. Thanks again.